it's time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about Advent is philosopher and theologian Kenneth Samples. Welcome, Ken. Hi, Krista. It's so great. It's it's my favorite time of year. Christmas is quickly approaching. Now, some of our friends who are watching might not be aware that Christians actually have their own calendar and that yeah. we are in the season of what Christians call Advent, which is why I have this wonderful Advent wreath yeah. um, lit Hello. right in Hello. front of me. And nice. maybe you could tell us a little bit about Advent and what that means. Okay, so the, the historic Christian church has its own calendar, and you'll see this uh, in the Catholic church, the Orthodox church, uh, Lutheran churches, Anglican churches, uh, maybe a little less so in some of the Protestant churches. But the essential idea is that our life is lived through the life of Jesus Christ. We celebrate his birth, we celebrate uh, his death, and glorify his resurrection. And so the beginning of the church year actually takes place uh, in December. That's called Advent. And Advent means coming. So Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, the Messiah, the Son of God, has come into the world and is born in the uh, womb of the Virgin Mary. And so the four weeks of December are called the season of Advent. Yeah, and if we were to even tease that out more, we would see the, the Christian calendar continue into celebrating other wonderful holidays and culminating in Easter and, and the resurrection. Right. Now, one of the customs at this time of the year in the Anglican tradition, which is really just English Protestantism, it comes out of England, is an annual service. It's my favorite service of the whole year. It's called Lessons and Carols. Um, and you kind of reread the story of Jesus' birth through the lens of salvation history. And I think the idea of is that so Jesus can be born anew in our hearts and that we're kind of contemplating um, his birth. Why do you think it's important for Christians maybe to take some time at this time of year to reflect on the birth of Jesus? Yeah, I, I think what's great about it, Krista, is that it allows us not to just live our lives independently, but but now because we have been adopted into the family of God and we're children of God, that we live our life in light of the great events of the coming of Jesus as, as Messiah. And, and just as we would celebrate our birthdays, we celebrate the, the coming into the world. And, and as you mentioned, the church year would then stretch forward and it would culminate in in uh, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And, and so I think what's great about a church calendar is it keeps in front of our mind the great events of Jesus's life. One of my favorite aspects of Advent is the lighting of the candles, which is why I'm so excited to have my, my wreath in front of us today. As the days grow shorter and the darkness periods grow longer, Jesus comes as a light to the world. I just love all the symbolism wrapped up with that. Maybe you can tell us, what does it mean to say that Jesus is the light of the world? Yeah, that's that's such a powerful imagery that, that Jesus is the light of the world. You could think of him as coming into a world that is cursed by sin, a, a dark world, and he brings the, the light of God. You could also think of it in an apologetic sense, that he is the logos, and uh, all of God's light and wisdom comes through uh, Jesus Christ. And so this idea of Jesus being light is, is a very powerful metaphor, and light is a, a metaphor that's intended for God himself. The candles sometimes are said to have symbolic meanings, things like peace and hope yeah. and, and different things like that. The middle candle is the Christ candle. Maybe we could just talk about one of the candles. Um, what does it mean to say Jesus is our peace? Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, when Jesus appears to his disciples uh, in the resurrection, of course, they're, they're very worried. They're very concerned. Uh, they have followed Jesus, and now he has been crucified. Uh, and when he appears to all of his disciples, he always begins the greeting with the Greek, Irene Umin, peace be unto you. 
Uh, well, when God, God is coming into the world and he has brought redemption through his son, Jesus Christ. And so uh, we can have peace with God. We, re we are reconciled through the, the incarnation, the atonement, the resurrection. Uh, and, you know, living in, in a world, particularly now in a, a world with the pandemic and the trials and difficulties, to know that Jesus has come into the world, he knows what it's like to suffer. He suffered with us, he suffered for us. We can have peace in our soul and have rest with God. And that's a wonderful thing to celebrate, especially at Christmas time. That's so well stated. And we want to invite any of our viewers, if you haven't come yet into peace with God, Christmas is a wonderful time of year to reflect on that. And as we look forward to Jesus's second advent, his second coming, he's coming again. Uh, Ken and I just want to encourage you to take time to reflect on who Jesus is and that he's inviting you. He wants to be your peace too between you and the Father. We wish you a Merry Christmas from all of us at Reasons to Believe.